Hey, I'm Greg. And I'm Dean. And we are getting ready to paddle the Wampanoag Canoe Passage. Uh, so we're in Situate, Massachusetts here. Uh, Massachusetts Bay is out that way. This is the North River and we will be paddling uh, up North River and its tributaries and ponds and so forth and hopping over to the Taunton River uh, watershed and going down that to Narragansett Bay. It's kind of crazy, so wish us luck. Let's get going. So we started at Driftway Conservation Park in Situate and uh, we're, we need to go up North River, but a different branch of North River, so we're backtracking a little bit. The Wampanoag Canoe Passage was a water trail connecting different parts of the realms of the Wampanoag tribes. The Poconoka and the other Wampanoag peoples were spread out over a wide area of current Rhode Island and southeastern Massachusetts. This water trail was a highway to travel throughout their territory. So the river mouth is out that way. There's an opening over here. I think there are channel markers. That house is looking really crooked. first part on the North River. As we get smaller and smaller, there will be different branches that go off in different directions and you don't want to go the wrong way. Site of Wonton Shipyard, 1670 to 1840. Over 107 vessels were built of 20 to 464 tons. Okay. That is really early. What? Really, really. Yeah, 1670. 64 tons is huge. Hmm. I wonder if, I mean, that must be a, one of the earliest shipyards in the country. 1670, I would say, yeah. Yeah. See what this looks like. <laughs> Someone burned the tree. Is that a tree. No idea who owns this, if anyone. So that was a brief look at a small marsh island. So this is Route 3. Hill Shipyard. For 56 vessels, 29 to 390 tons. I'm sorry, those 390 tons, those are some big boats. Yeah. For this kind of an area. 1690 to 1869. Well, I guess it's 56 vessels that they know of. Right. But they weren't exactly cranking out the ships. No. I mean, I'm no. sure there were more than that that they don't know of, but. Smith Shipyard, later called Barstow's Lower Yard, 1789 to 1846. It seems like kind of a small channel to uh, be building 400 ton ships. 
Barstow's Two Oaks Shipyard, 1760 to 1838. Shipyard number five. Our water course is getting awfully small. Well, might be waiting soon. Did I mention it was going to be an adventure? Yes, you did. We do have a downstream current now, so we seem to be out of the tidal area. Going upstream on Herring Brook. I think the navigability of this water course is somewhat questionable. So we are camped for the night at my hammock under the tarp. Um, we didn't make quite as much progress as we were planning to, but I mean, we we're only like a mile short, so it's not too bad. Hey, it's the morning of day two. I've been paddling for about a minute and uh, I've already run aground. <laughs> so we, uh, we found a place to camp in a wild area last night, between here and there. Yeah, I think I'm walking it. Yeah, I'm walking. Well, maybe. I guess we'll see. Where did my paddle go? Mind grabbing that paddle for me? How'd that happen? <laughs> I don't know. Carelessness.
What do you do when you find a body that only has legs attached? Uh, what kind of body? Pulling my leg. <laughs> That's only pulled its legs. Yeah. It's a oh, doll. This is a lot of effort. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, important note, um, I'm paddling a pack canoe, um, and, and length matters, obviously, doing this sort of thing. Uh, my boat is 12 foot, Dean's boat is 14 and a half, which proved to be a little on the long side for this. Um, but anyway, usually with a solo pack canoe, you use a kayak paddle, but I brought a canoe paddle as well, which proved to be invaluable for those places where there's not enough room to swing a kayak paddle. So this is Herring Run Historical Park in Pembroke, and that's the Herring Run. So from here we're going to do some portaging by road. So this seems to be the Pembroke Town Center. So this little building over here is the uh, first parish sewing circle. <laughs> Traditionally, the Wampanoag Canoe Passage follows Herring Brook upstream to Furnace Pond, and then across a narrow land bridge to Great Sandy Bottom Pond and on from there. That small land bridge is all that separates North River Watershed from Taunton River Watershed. However, it would be difficult to paddle Herring Brook all the way to Furnace Pond, and Great Sandy Bottom Pond is closed to boat traffic. At some point, you need a portage, whether a long portage or a short one. So we made it to Stetson Pond. Time to paddle across, which probably won't take very long. So that was a grueling two hour, four mile portage. Bug. Which uh, I would not be eager to do again. Dean doesn't want to say anything about the portage. Back to paddling. Yay. Sounds like my rudder is not ruddering. Your deploy line is loose. Yeah. I mean, it's not down all the way. It's not down. Okay. Yeah, your rudder is messed up. There we go. Did it hit it popped off again? Yeah, the cousin popped off. Better to paddle it than portage. Yes.
You know the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? Well, an alligator, you're gonna see later. And a crocodile, you've seen in a while. <laughs> I'm still unclear on the difference. <laughs> So this is the next pond on the trail, kind of weedy, and <laughs> this is the entry point. Uh, I spent a lot of time, I mean like 30 to 60 minutes maybe, cutting my way through that. It's not an entirely, entirely straight path, so you can't really just see through. Dean's trying to make his way through now. We're uh, mostly through the bushes. <laughs> I think um, what we really need next is a uh, a classy restaurant to eat lunch at. Yeah. Oh, it looks like it goes through there. Maybe. We've had our lunch, time to paddle another pond. Just gonna have a look. We have some railroad tracks to cross and we've decided that the indirect route, which has lower slopes, is the more sensible one. So. There's a cranberry bob over here. Stetson Brook is only a half mile long, but it has probably been the ruin of many attempts to paddle the Wampanoag Canoe Passage. It starts out looking disgusting, but navigable. The brush soon closes in, and you have to cut your way through. After a while, it gets more shallow, so you have to wade. After that, it spreads out into a swamp with no clear way through. The only part of it that I recorded was the easy part. It's hard to shoot video when there's brush in the way catching on your camera. I have since returned to Stetson Brook, and after a few hours of cutting my way and enduring the mosquitoes, I almost got through. After much work trying to clear this water course, we're uh, turning around. So, um, Dean has reached the end of himself. Um, he's going home, and uh, I am going to attempt to go on and portage to Montpensa Ponds. Dean didn't bring any coffee with him, and it had been a day and a half since he had any. That might not have helped. I'm on West Montpensa Pond. Uh, I can't claim to have done the whole trail because I just uh, accepted a ride. So it is what it is. Massasoit Usamaquin was chief of the Poconocet when the Pilgrims landed. He established peaceful relations with the Pilgrims and sold them land. He was succeeded by his eldest son, Wamzutta, who took on the name King Alexander. Plymouth Colony authorities demanded that Wamzutta appear before them, 
possibly to explain rumors that he was going to start a revolt. He didn't come at their appointed time, and Major Josias Winslow was authorized to find and arrest Ramzada. It was a high-handed way to treat an ally. It was on an island here, in Monponset Pond, that Ramzada was arrested and brought to Plymouth Colony. A few days later, he fell ill and died. His body was returned home using the Wampanoag Canoe Passage. Some believed that Wamzutta had been poisoned. His brother, Metacomet, also known as King Philip, succeeded him as Massasoit. Thirteen years later, King Philip's war broke out. There was much loss of life among the English, but the Native Americans were decimated. This goes on for quite a ways. So this is the dam at the end of Monponset Pond. Um, it was a struggle to get here. So this is the dam at the end of Monponset Pond. Um, so I have the Burridge Pond Wildlife Management Area over here. A lot of that is um, old cranberry bog. Uh, but there is some areas uh, I found a place that I should be able to camp. So that's good. Um, so when I when I got the permit to camp in the wildlife management areas, I just got it for all of them on this route. I've done a lot of paddling, and um, yeah, that was the uh, that was the toughest day um, paddling I've ever had. I would not rate Stetson Brook as navigable by any means. the The only way you should do it is if you scout it beforehand. And by scout it, I mean with uh, a handsaw and loppers and lots of time on your hand. Burge Pond, um, there's a bunch of retired cranberry bogs, so most of it is not dry land. So, so I'm camped out beside the trail. So this is the brook over here. Um, on the left is a long since retired cranberry bog. Again. Osprey nesting platform. This really is a vast area. You can see the size of it. <clears throat> it's also a bit of a mosquito factory. So I'm trying to keep moving.
birds their carols raise, the morning light the lily wood declare their maker's praise. This is my father's world. He shines in all its fair. In the rustling grass, I hear. He speaks to me everywhere. for breakfast. So things have not gone exactly as planned. Um, I, I didn't plan to camp here, um, but uh, it's a good day. This is where I was meant to be. Day three. It's a beautiful morning. Feeling blessed this morning. It's stunning to see just before the sunrise, uh, the Urge Pond, wildlife management area. It's a sight to see. <laughs> Time to get going. Lots of miles to cover today. We're basically out on open marsh now. Um, no more tree line for the most part to the right. That means there's a lot less chance of trees and logs in the water. So that's a good situation. It is a circuitous route, and sometimes there are multiple options. water culvert, I guess. Now we're getting to the next marsh. tree down back there. That was a struggle to get through. Hmm. Which way are we going now? It's opened up again. 
And that's good news. So at the end of that marsh over there. So there's a water course here. <laughs> and actually there's another one that goes that way. On the other side of this. And then there's one that goes that way, which I believe is the path forward. That has got to be the biggest beaver lodge I've ever seen. Oh, there's a beaver dam over here. Gotten out on the shore. A road bridge ahead. Oh, and another beaver dam. Great! So there's not an easy way around it. After evaluating the situation, I've decided to do it on the left. <laughs> it was not fun. Now my gear is all on that side. To do something. There we go. Very shallow enough to wade. That's a production. Well, there's a bridge over there, and there's a bridge over there. This calls for an investigation. Like it one bit. I don't think there's much water flowing through that.
Yeah, I think when it comes down to it, you'd be better off ignoring any no trespassing signs and cutting through the yard over here. <laughs> That's not my nice take on the situation. Breaking into Robin's Pond was a bear. Obviously a lot of dams and uh, culverts have been installed since the Native Americans did this trail. <laughs> so we're back in another marsh. Um, I think it opens up eventually. This is not too bad. I asked the lady if I could get through over by the dam here and she said it was kind of rough and rocky but she said I could. Um, I think this portage is like paradise compared to some of the other ones I've done today. So on this track the advantage is definitely with uh, having a boat that you can uh, portage quickly. So I don't know that I'd recommend a kayak of any kind rather than a canoe. Um, unless it's something really lightweight and you pack really light and you're strong enough to carry it easily without unloading it. But that's kind of a tall order. Poison ivy, so that's good. So the other option was to go over the rip rap dam in the middle. It would have been steep but short. And I think maybe it would have been better than this. There is an island here in the latter part of Robin's Pond, but there are uh, posted no trespassing signs there. Just thought I'd check. So Tucket River, here we come. So I think somewhere around where you see these telephone poles is the beginning of uh, Poor Meadow Brook Wildlife Management Area. Here's our next little dam. This is Poor Meadow Brook, got a beaver dam there. Looks like a pretty decent flow. Muddy. Oh, 
Are they going the wrong way? I am not optimistic about that. I'm 90% sure we uh, walked around that. <laughs> I slipped partially in and the boat started sliding away. I'm probably going to walk this one. Otherwise, I'll just bang up my boat. poison ivy on the tree there. There's not much room under it with lions on the mound, so what is done. Hmm, what the hell? Plenty of room. I don't know if I have to go on the camera. Oh man, there's a way through there and it's got poison ivy. Be able to just squeeze through. my lunch ready to move onward. This uh, does not look good. <laughs> like a floating piece of lumber here. And there are rocks at the other end. Sorry, I'm gonna have to put the camera boom down. I got it. I know.
I've seen a few deer today. Just saw a big turtle floating in the river. Doesn't look like there's a way to get past that, eh? Seem like this river was becoming more reasonable. Looks good. So there's the old mill. There was a dam there, uh, and it was taken out a few years ago. But I think the river goes under part of the mill. Some of those posts are supported by nothing. <laughs> That's encouraging. Here we duck under the poison ivy. Go get the boat. Now this is the kind I like. Don't even have to duck.
Hey, doggy. Nice oh, hey, Rocky, where are you? <laughs> Drinking. You coming to see it? That's a beautiful canoe. Thank you. Where'd you put it? Uh, situate. Yeah. How long did it take you to get here? Uh, I'm on day three. Nice. <laughs> yep. And slow down today because of all the portages and uh, marsh. I've been on this sec section of the Sepulchre River. Uh, and I haven't, I haven't shot very much video. Um, it's just uh, there's a ton of trees in the water. On the positive side, I did have one pretty significant um, feeder stream come in. And so that has increased the flow, increased the size of the river, and if it increases a bit more, then um, it'll be maybe too wide for trees to block it all that easily. So that would be nice. So, uh, there's a pretty much 0% chance that I will make my intended campsite tonight, um, <laughs> unless I paddle till 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to do the entire um, Wampanoag Passage in this trip. Because I don't have, I don't have a fifth day that I could uh, devote to it. So. Anyway, so it goes. I'll probably I do the rest. Whatever I don't do, I'll do as a day trip or two day trips, whatever. <laughs> That'll be the easy part anyway. <laughs> That's tree number one. Here's tree number two. And coming right up is tree number three. Anyway, I need to make a bit more progress because um, I'm running low on water to drink, and uh, I have a water drop up here, oh, I'll assume a mile or so, so I need to grab that, I have plenty of water. More than enough water for two of us, and there's only one of us, so I'm dumping some. One can't help but wonder what this water trail was like before the pilgrims landed. Obviously the dams and culverts were not here then. There would be no municipal water plant drawing water out of Great Sandy Bottom Pond, which would also be open for boating. Assuming the Native Americans made frequent use of the trail, they would likely make a point of cleaning up the trees in the water. The Native Americans also had villages along the trail, so there would be stops along the way. It's also important to note that this is not a one-way street. They use this trail to go in both directions. Hey, I see some blue sky. Looks like portage time. The river has gotten a lot bigger though. So, sooner or later we're going to get past this sort of stuff.
Looks like we got another major tributary joining the party. So that's good news. Might be natural rapids, looks like a dam though. Yeah, let's go see about this. the right boat for it with me I'd, uh, I'd totally run that. Hey, so that was a long and pretty tough day of paddling. Um, you know, nothing goes quickly when you've got lots of trees in the water or you've got lots of difficult portages to do um, or you've got really tight turns through a marsh and you know, you can't go fast doing that. So just to give you the numbers, uh, I was paddling for, I don't know, 12 or 13 hours, something like that, and made 15 miles, so that's pretty slow. Anyway, so I'm here at uh, Taunton River Wildlife Management Area. It's a pretty big space. I haven't explored at all because uh, I'm too tired for that. So <clears throat> setting up here next to the mud pit, um, not too much undergrowth, so good enough. Not mud that I sink in, so yeah, that's good. Some kind of onion plant. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Bidding farewell to my mud pit. It is day four. <laughs> yep. So I had my boat mostly out of the water last night. Maybe entirely out of the water. There was a significant amount of rain yesterday, so the river has risen quite a bit. Used to be a bridge. Wildlands Trust has a preserve up here and you can see that they <coughs> built a little deck with some benches on top of the uh, bridge abutment. That's kind of cool. Someone did some cutting. That's nice. Oh, 
I've been uh, battling the Wampanoag Canoe Passage. Is it clear of snags? Uh, no, you've got to work around a lot. Oh yeah, it's pretty miserable. I mean, it seems like there's not a lot of boat ramps or you know, boat launches for access to it. And so, you know, it seems like less access means less people cleaning the stuff up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nobody really tends it at all. Yeah. But I mean, nonetheless, it's, it's good to get out. Yeah. Looks like a boat launch to me. Uh, so this is at Summer Street. It's been a lot of river miles since I saw a boat launch. So, this this boat launch. Looks like there were some in, that may have been there that I missed. Like another tributary entering on the left. It was the Namaskat River that entered on the left, therefore, there's another small section of Taunton River Wildlife Management Area on the left here, um, right after the Namaskat River. There was one part that looked reasonably accessible, a lot of it doesn't. But it has river frontage here and also on Namaskat. This will be the Titicut Street Bridge. Steam gauge station right there. My time of solo paddling had come to an end, as my friend Chris had come to pick me up. So I'm skipping that rapid under the bridge and uh, then uh, Chris and I are going to rearrange vehicles and then paddle as a day trip further down. We are back on the water, headed down the river for a bit. So this is the easiest part of the whole trip. We're only doing, what, maybe six, seven miles? The beginning part was not bad either. What? I was doing the column slalom. We're seeing some nice little private camps along the river now. You must have got a few paddle passes in with all the logs. No. Wasn't in the frame of mind of that style of paddling, I guess. Frank's had enough of going under branches. <laughs> hoping for a good thunderstorm. Well, <laughs> it may happen yet. You're going to see my paddle action. <laughs> what paddle action? Is that what you said? <laughs> no, I see your paddle action. <laughs>
Found his surf spot. on the lookout for rainbows. Route 44. The lag boat. <laughs> Trying to make you nervous, that's all. As a group effort, my trip was not a success. Maybe I didn't prepare them for exactly how difficult the trip was going to be. Most of the group pulled out before we even started. As a solo trip, it pushed me to the limit of what I felt I could do. But I felt very empowered at the end that I'd actually succeeded in pressing through all the difficulty. Tired but empowered. So we're ready to finish for today. So I haven't completed the entire trip yet. I'm going to have to come back as a day trip and uh, do the bottom part. I've uh, done the bulk of it. We're on the easy part now anyway. Hello. So that's a wrap for now. Rosie's all loaded up, and so is the beast. Fishing barge. Glad to be a part of it. Beautiful. Go through the rain and the sun and the rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's nice, peaceful. Changeable weather. Um, yeah, this is a nice section of Taunton River. I mean, not very quick, but um, not very obstructed either. So that's nice. Peaceful. Not too many houses at all. Yep. So I'll have to be back to uh, do the final part of it. Get her done. Thank you for watching. I will have more videos coming out that continue the adventure and also a video about how to plan a trip on the Wampanoag Canoe Passage. <laughs>